All right, everybody. Simply put, this movie is nothing but a good time, and you are having it with the man himself, the Shatner. <laughs> Let's go. All right, everybody, 1977's Kingdom of the Spiders. I love this movie. To the trailer, to the trailer. An unknown species of horror is born as science fiction becomes science fact. If you find any problems, I'll have to go over the place. Just keep it to yourself. <laughs> Another 20 or 30 hills just like the one we burned. I mean, this right here is scientific phenomenon. As you know, all species of megalomorphs are cannibalistic. If you put them together, they'll kill each other off. They just don't colonize like ants or bees do. An army of deadly predators searching, destroying anything in their path. Why did they come? What do they want? In the tradition of the great science fiction thrillers, Dimension Pictures presents Kingdom of the Spiders. Starring William Shatner, Tiffany Bowling, Woody Strode, and introducing Alphabese Davis. The spiders in this area have organized themselves into an aggressive army. I've never seen anything like it. One minute they weren't there, and the next minute they were everywhere. Jump at a girl! <laughs> Listen, there's thousands of them out there. We'll never make it. Why haven't we heard from the sheriff? He must know we're trapped in here. I'm telling you, I don't think we should chance it. Your nightmares will never be the same. Kingdom of the Spiders. The next victim could be you. Okay, this movie was directed by John Bud Cardos. John Bud Cardos was kind of like a, this figure in low-budget movies from back in the 70s. He directed this, he directed uh, Gore 2, he directed uh, Mutant, he directed another movie we're going to be covering called uh, The Dark, which was like this low-budget, is it a monster, is it an alien, who the hell knows what the hell it really is. He directed movies like uh, Drag Racer and Skeleton Ghost, but he also starred in movies. He was also an actor in a lot of these various low-budget flicks. So sometimes you'll see his face and you'll be like, oh my, wait a minute, that's the director, but he's the actor? Yeah, John Bucardos, legendary figure in that kind of underground community. God bless him. And he did an excellent job directing this motion picture. He really did. I thought he did phenomenal. So, hey, away we go. Okay, starring as Robert Rack Hansen, veterinarian, is the legendary William Shatner. Still going strong at 88, 89, whatever he is at the point of that I'm making this video. I just seen him do a Q&A session for like an hour, hour and a half, not even a year ago. I was in like, you know, the 13th row or something like that. The man has more energy and more recall than any human being ever should at his age or probably even 20 years younger. Not only has he played the iconic, legendary, one and only Captain James T. Kirk of the Enterprise, and to a huge Star Trek fan, I mean huge Star Trek fan, that in and of itself is enough. But he's also been like to a slightly younger generation. He was T.J. Hooker, floating around on television for years. Before that, he was popping up on TV shows like, you know, Twilight Zone or Outer Limits or whatever. And he's had a long, long career just being William Shatner. He's released albums. He's released tons of books. He's been he's authored not just books about his own life or Star Trek, but he had a show uh, a series of books about tech war. He had all kinds of things going on, and beyond that, he's parlayed himself. He's parlayed himself into being this media thing. You had him hosting stuff like William Shatner's Raw Nerve which was a great interview show, by the way. It was sad to see that it came and went, but it was, it was great while it was around. He really asked some cool questions. He, was, uh, he would host various different television shows, and he was basically now, past, past the Captain Kirk thing, past all that, he is just 
William Shatner, American legend. Okay, next we got Tiffany Bowling playing Diane Ashby, arachnopologist, or however the hell you pronounce somebody who studies spiders for all intents and purposes. Tiffany Bowling had a really cool career going for herself in, I hate to say low budget films, but they were kind of low budget films. And she was also on a lot of television shows. She was in a lot, a lot of TV shows. She was on stuff like Marcus Welby and Ironside. She was on things like Barnaby Jones. She was also a TV show called Man from Atlantis, which is like a, a forgotten gem, a truly forgotten gem. And she was on that. She was in uh, episodes of Charlie's Angels. She was in she was in Electra Woman and Dinah Girl. I mean, just, just crazy shit. But she also had this B-movie career, and she was in uh, these movies like, obviously, King of the Spiders. She was in Bonnie's Kids, The Candy Snatchers, <laughs> Wicked Wicked, stuff like that. She retired from acting way, 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 way long time ago. She also did some singing and a lot of modeling and stuff like that, but she's been out of the scenes since I can't remember since when. But she'll always be in Kingdom of the Spiders, and hell, you can't knock that. Okay, playing uh, rancher Walter Colby is Willie Strode. Now, Willie Strode had an incredible career. He was in The Man Who Shot Liberty Vallis. He was in uh, The Ten Commandments. He was in he was in Spartacus. You know, he was, he was pop up playing gladiators or, or, or kings or something like that. Willie Strode had, had an awesome, awesome motion picture career, an awesome talent career, television career. If I sat here and listed all the crap that he was in, I'd be here for quite a while. But Willie Strode was in this movie always, always, always was awesome in everything he was ever in. So, for that, yep, wicked. Okay, playing Gene Smith, we got David McLean. David McLean was an actor who popped up a lot of times in the 70s also. He was on a lot of tele television shows. You know, beyond being in Kingdom of the Spiders and some other motion pictures, he was on a lot of TV shows. He was on things like The Streets of San Francisco, Ironside, Death Valley Days. He was in the motion picture The Andromeda Strain. So he had this career that ran around that era of time. You see him pop up. Uh, I don't know what he really did much after the 70s, you know, or definitely mid 80s. I can't remember ever seeing him really again. But for that period of time, you see his face creep up and he always did a good job, so rocking out. Okay, playing Emma Washburn is Lou Dressler. She was on shows like uh, Moonlighting and Beretta. She had a long, long, long television career. It was in, it was on a lot of television shows, some B movies. But what she's going to mostly be known to people for is that she played Alice Grant for years and years and years on General Hospital. And yes, I do know she was on General Hospital. And yes, I used to see General Hospital because let me tell you people something. Back in the day when houses all had one television set with three channels, the elders in the house completely controlled everything. It wasn't like you got to watch what you wanted. Whatever mom or grandmom or whoever the hell was watching, that's what you watched. And when I came home from school every day, Grandma was watching General Hospital. So guess what I watched? Goddamn right, I had to watch General Hospital. Roll with that. Anyway, that being said, she did a really good job in this movie. Totally believable kind of a character. She wasn't one of those people that was put in a movie to be the glamorous type or anything like that. She just, if, if she, somebody said, that's your aunt, you believe that's your aunt. They said, that's your grandma, that's your grandma. You just looked at her and you said, of course she is. Why wouldn't she be? The motion picture starts out with Bill Shatner and this lady Terry, and they are out there having a good time riding their horses, and they are roping steer, and blah blah blah, and they are awful playful and awful flirty with each other. And they're rolling around in the dirt having a good old time, but you soon find out that Terry is the widow of Rack's brother, who died two days into his stay in Vietnam. So they have this kind of a strange relationship where they're obviously attracted to each other, they obviously care about each other. But it's his dead brother's wife, and it's her dead husband's brother, and it's kind of they want to, but they don't, and they're close to, but they can't, and it's a weird relationship. Anyway, while that's going on, he gets a phone call from a dispatch saying, hey, you know, you got to get back, we got a problem out at the Colby farm. It turns out one of the Colby's prize steers was taken down and killed. They don't understand why. There's something wrong. They can't really figure out what's going on. Obviously, something has made this thing sick and basically killed it. But nobody's really sure. So they take samples, they do what they got to do, and off to the races we go. Okay, Rack sends off the uh, test results to a lab, and they find out that the, uh, the, the, the prize calf was killed by a massive amount of spider venom.
That's where Dr. Diane Ashley says, wait, I gotta get out there, this is a serious problem. She shows up on the scene, Shatner flirts with her in only the way that the Shat man can. He is all over this chick, like white on rice. I mean, he is like, every time he talks to her, he's, you know, <laughs> he's Shatner. I mean, he's, he's, he's Captain Kirk Shatnerizing this chick. That's, what, that's all he does. Okay, I wandered. I'm back on point now. Anyway, the doctor says she basically wants to go see where the calf was uh, discovered and where this all took place. So they go out there, they're examining the area. They find out just literally as they're getting there, the Kobe's dog is now dead. What the hell's going on out there in this neck of the woods? And she says, wait a minute, it looks like it's been killed by spiders too, for all intents and purposes. And that's when old man Kobe says, well, man, I must have something to do with that spider hill I found. With all this going on, he never thought about telling them that there was a giant spider hill off on his property about the size of a, of a station wagon that is just sitting there crawling with tarantulas and all kinds of everything just roaming all over it. I guess not, but whatever, we're going to forgive it because this movie kicks ass anyway and we just don't give a shit. We're rolling, we're rolling, and we're having a good time. Now, from here on out, I don't want to give you too much of what goes on in this motion picture because you got the gist of it. Calves are dying, doctors are called in, spiders are responsible, spiders are everywhere. Spiders at one point take over this whole friggin' town. Masses of people being crawled on, masses of people being killed, people being closed in closed spaces, fighting off spiders. This movie is exciting, dramatic, tense. It's a really good time. Wait a minute, was that some of my summation? I shouldn't have said that. Okay, this movie works because it has charm and cheese and a good story that is taken fairly seriously. It's not made to feel stupid or, or dumb or be looked down upon. You're kind of meant to feel like, man, this could happen at any time. It's got a cute little soundtrack score to it that has a sound of... It kind of almost feels like spiders walking on you. The movie is well-directed. Uh, all the actors do a solid job in it, even though the, this, the idea of the whole town being taken over by spiders it could probably be a little bit goofy. There's great scenes where there's like a crop duster and he's taken out by the spiders that were in his plane. There's a great scene where uh, old man Colby is taken out. There's an incredible scene where William Shatner himself he does a scene, you know these spiders are real, you know they're crawling over, and he goes down to change a fuse in this lodge they're hiding out in, and all of a sudden, the spiders fall all over him, and you see Shatner, he's crawling up the stairs. Shatner, bash it! And they're biting him, and he's got marks all over his body, and all this other kind of crap. This movie is like a 70s, completely implausible plotline movie, made to feel plausible. It keeps the same tone, the same feeling. It never breaks into a comedy. It never breaks into something stupid. It stays true to the zone in the, in the genre that it should stay in. And it is a thoroughly enjoyable motion picture. One of those kind of flicks that, I mean, it might not get the greatest reviews. Some people might now look back at it and say it was cheesy or it was corny. But I'm telling you now, Kingdom of the Spiders is a fun watch a great afternoon just spent for a couple hours watching this going, oh my God, look what they did. And they must have killed like a lot of spiders. I mean, there's real spiders dying in this movie. You can see them. I'm amazed they got away with this kind of crap at the time, but whatever. It's well done. It's creepy. If you have a fear of spiders, you're going to be completely freaked out by this. And it's not that kind of corny freaked out that they did in other movies, even though I loved like eight-legged freaks and shit like that where the spiders were huge and all that kind of stuff. This feels very authentically real, even though it's in completely impossible, but it feels real and it feels like this could happen to me in my basement it feels like this could happen to me in my yard so it stays within the zone that's supposed to stay in it never breaks out of it the spiders don't breathe fire they can't fly they don't you know they're not they're not amassing with some brain giant scheme they're just storm trooping all over everything and killing anything that they see well done well directed kingdom of the spiders check it out have a good time peace out here <laughs>